In this tutorial, you will learn how to design a simple gear train with a given gear ratio, and coaxial input and output shafts, in Blender 2.8. In a gear train, multiple gears are engaged to provide a particular overall gear ratio. If there are multiple stages in a gear train, the overall gear ratio is the multiple of the gear ratios of each stage. To achieve a higher overall gear ratio, intermediary gears in a train are often made up of rigidly connected coaxial gears with a different number of teeth. They are called compound gears. In this example, the first stage has a gear ratio of 1 to 3 and the second stage, 1 to 4. Therefore, thanks to the use of a compound gear, the overall gear ratio of this train is 1 to 12. Since there is an even number of stages, too, the input and output shafts spin in the same direction. They would spin in the opposite directions if the number of stages were odd. We will be designing a simple two-stage gear train with the overall ratio of 1 to 12, with the input and output shafts mounted on the same axis. A mechanism like that can be used in a toy clock. Let's look at the schematics. The input gear is shown here in green, compound gear in silver, and output gear in gold. We need to choose the teeth numbers for each of the four gears involved. Let Z1, Z2, Z3, and Z4 designate the number of teeth in each gear, and R1, R2, R3, and R4, their radii. We have the following restrictions, Z2 divided by Z1 times Z4 divided by Z3 should be 12. Also, since the input and output axes coincide, the gear radii must satisfy the following equation, R1 plus R2 must equal R3 plus R4. For the sake of simplicity, let's assume all four gears have the same module. This means the radii are proportional to the number of teeth, and therefore we can replace R's with Z's. To solve this system of equations, we will write a simple Python script and execute it in Blender. The script will iterate through all possible combinations of teeth in the range 8 to 50, and display the combinations that fit our two conditions. In Blender, open a new window. Choose Text Editor for the window type. Press New. Type the following script, which can also be found in the video description. Press Run Script. To see the results, go to Window and select Toggle System Console. There are 8 results. We want to minimize the number of teeth in the biggest gear, and can choose between the first or third results. We will use the third result, 10, 30, 8 and 32. Let's start modeling. Delete the default cube by pressing X. Press 7 on the numeric pad to switch to the top view and 5 for the orthographic mode. Select 3D cursor as the pivot point. Go to our instant gear calculator at www.otvinta.com slash instantgear.html. For the first pair of gears, enter 10 and 30 for the number of teeth. If you are using Blender 2.8, check the corresponding box at the bottom. Press Calculate. We are getting an overlap warning. To get rid of it, enter a 0.5 profile shift for the smaller gear. Press Calculate. The warning persists. Enter 0.6. Press Calculate. Copy and paste the generated script to Blender's text window. Press Run Script. Note this number on the very last line of the Python script, 20.5464. This is the mounting distance between the two gears. Normally it would be 20, but because of the 0.6 profile shift, this number is slightly greater. We need to make sure the other two gears have the exact same mounting distance. To create gears 3 and 4, 
Go back to the calculator. This time enter 32 and 8 for the number of teeth. We need to apply the same profile shift, 0.6. Let's spread it between the two gears as follows, 0.1 and 0.5. Press calculate. Scroll down and make sure the mounting distance on the last line is the same as before, 20.5464. Copy and paste the script to Blender. Press run script. Let's turn gear 1 into a solid object. Normally we would extrude and scale down, and then use the sphere function by pressing shift alt s. However, the concavity of the contour, caused by a small number of teeth and profile shift, makes this method impractical, as it creates overlapping faces, here. We are going to use a more complex method for the two small gears. Select the top two vertices and keep pressing Ctrl plus, until the entire tooth is selected. 38 vertices should be highlighted in the end. Press Ctrl I, to invert the selection. Delete the highlighted vertices. Select the two bottom vertices. Press Shift S, and select cursor to select it. Add a circle, give it twice the number of vertices in the tooth, which is 76. Scale it down to about here. Highlight the bottom half of the vertices in the circle and delete them. Delete one more vertex to equalize the number of vertices in the tooth and circle. Select everything. From the Edge menu, select Bridge Edge Loops. Press Shift C to return the cursor to the origin. Duplicate and rotate by 36 degrees by pressing Shift D, R, Z, 36, then Enter. 36 is 360 divided by the number of teeth, which is 10. Connect the two teeth with a new face, as follows. Select everything and rotate by 36 degrees again by pressing Shift D, R, Z, 36, then Enter. Repeat this operation by pressing Shift R, until the entire gear is modeled. Select everything, right click, and select Remove Double Vertices. Select the inner loop. Press E to extrude, S to scale, 0.8, then Enter. To turn it into a circular shape, press Shift Alt S, then 1, then Enter. Note the number of vertices selected. There should be 380. Add a circle with 380 vertices and radius of 2. Press E to extrude, S to scale, 1.5, then Enter. Select this loop of vertices while holding Shift and Alt keys. Use Bridge Edge Loops. Select everything and extrude downwards by 5 by pressing E, minus 5, then Enter. Deselect everything. Switch to the Face Select mode. Select this loop of faces. Extrude upwards by 15 by pressing E, Z, 15, then Enter. Select everything. Press Shift N, to fix the normals. Press Tab to exit the edit mode. Gear 1 is ready. Select Gear 2. Enter the edit mode. Switch back to the Vertex Select mode. Press E to extrude, S to scale, 0 0.5, then Enter. Press Shift Alt S, to turn this into a circular shape, then 1, then Enter. Note the number of selected vertices. There are 1216. Add a circle, enter 1216 for the number of vertices, and 3.5 for radius. Press E to extrude, S to scale, 2, then enter. Bridge with the inner loop of the gear using bridge edge loops. Select everything, extrude upwards by 5 by pressing E, Z, 5, then enter. Switch to the face select mode. Select this loop of faces and extrude upwards by 5. Select everything and press Shift N, to fix the normals. Press Tab to exit the edit mode. Gear 2 is ready. Let's turn Gear 3 into a solid object using the same method we used with Gear 1. This time, the angle of rotation is 45 degrees because there are 8 teeth.
Add a circle with 304 vertices and a radius of 2. Use bridge edge loops. Select everything, and extrude downwards by 5. Switch to the face select mode, and delete selected faces. To couple this gear with the larger gear and avoid overlapped faces, we are going to use the following trick. Select this loop of vertices. Duplicate by pressing Shift D. Press P, and choose Selection, to form a separate object. Press Tab to exit the edit mode. Select the separated loop and move it down by 5 by pressing G, Z, minus 5, then Enter. In the edit mode, select everything, and extrude down by 1 by pressing E, Z, minus 1, then Enter. Exit the edit mode. Add the solidify modifier. Enter negative 0.3 for thickness. Hit apply. Enter the edit mode and delete selected vertices. Exit the edit mode. Move the object up by 5. Join with the gear by selecting both objects and pressing Ctrl J. Select everything, right click, and select remove double vertices. Select the outer loop of vertices. Press Shift S and select cursor to select it. Press E to extrude, S to scale, 2, then enter. Turn this into a circular shape by pressing Shift Alt S, 1, then enter. Exit the edit mode. Select gear 4. Move it down by 5. Enter the edit mode. Press E to extrude, S to scale. 0.8, then enter. Turn this into a circular shape by pressing Shift Alt S, 1, then enter. Exit the edit mode. Join gears 3 and 4 by selecting them both and pressing Ctrl J. Enter the edit mode and use bridge edge loops. Select the outer loop of vertices and extrude downwards by 5. Press Shift S and select cursor to select it. Press E to extrude, S to scale, 0.8, then enter. Turn this into a circular shape by pressing Shift Alt S, 1, then enter. Select the inner loop of vertices on the inside of the smaller gear. Extrude downwards by 5. Select this loop of vertices and use bridge edge loops. Select everything and press Shift N to fix the normals. Exit the edit mode. Move the gear up by 4.9 instead of 5, to leave a small gap between the gears. Press Shift C to return the 3D cursor to the origin. Select everything. Turn by 90 degrees to give our mechanism a vertical orientation. Let's test the mechanism using Blender's Rigid Body Physics Engine. Add a cylinder and move it up. Call it Axis 1. Add an empty and move it up. Call it Hinge 1. Add another empty and move it up. Call it Hinge 2. Add another empty. Turn it around the Y axis by 90 degrees by pressing R, Y, 90, then Enter. Move it down. Call it Motor. Select the compound gear. Press Shift S and select Cursor to select it. Add a cylinder and move it up. Call it Axis 2. Add an empty and move it up. Call it Hinge 3. Open the Physics tab. Select all gears one by one, press Rigid Body, and select Mesh for Shape, and Zero for Margin.
select the cylinders one by one, press rigid body and select passive for type. Select hinge 1. Press rigid body constraint. Select hinge for type, gear 1 for object 1 and axis 1 for object 2. Select hinge 2. Press rigid body constraint. Select hinge for type, gear 2 for object 1 and axis 1 for object 2. Select motor. Press rigid body constraint. Select motor for type, gear 1 for object 1 and axis 1 for object 2. Enable angular motion. Select hinge 3. Press rigid body constraint. Select hinge for type, gear 3 for object 1 and axis 2 for object 2. Press spacebar to start the simulation. For a better visual, let's model minute and hour hands, and parent them to gear 1 and gear 2, respectively. And that concludes our tutorial. Thanks for watching.